Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. I know John gets students tomorrow in school. Of the teachers that are here, how many of you have students already or get them as early as tomorrow? I see two hands at least. Okay. I see a few retired teachers in the group too. But uh, welcome to everyone, especially the visitors. Slowly but surely as we go through this month, we'll have more and more people come back that have been vacationing, and then can we pray for our winter Texan season with a few more than last year if all goes well. Uh, order of service is pretty straightforward. There's no communion today, so uh, we will begin with the thanksgiving for baptism from the back. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. Bless us, God, and forever. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bless you, Jesus, now and Pour out your Holy Spirit, so that those who are here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water, and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We remain seated for our opening hymn. First verse, English. Second verse, Spanish. Third, English. So if you speak Spanish, we expect you to sing extra loud today on the Spanish part.
respond with a resounding yes, that they want to participate and follow you as they participate in the life of this congregation. Next Sunday, we will ask blessings upon them, and particularly the teachers that will instruct them, and all the programs that restart again during this time. We give you thanks for the summer past. We pray now that uh, our learning would continue in many ways, not just at the regular schools, but here at Sunday School as well. We would learn more about you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody. You can return to your seats at this time. We'll continue with our first lesson. today is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 through 2a and 14 through 18. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say Psalm 34, 1 through 15 through 22, responsibly. With the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to the, their cry. The face of the Lord is against the believers, to God out the remembrance of them. Righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord, the Lord is here, the Lord of my heart, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be overcome. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord believes the light of his servants. None of those who be the refuge in him will be condemned. The second lesson is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put the whole armor of God on. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with you, which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that I may speak, 
so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we sing the Alleluia, I'm going to invite the children back up here. This is a little out of order, but the children come back up. And uh, when I finished the message, I looked at my notes and I forgot a very important thing I wanted to do with you today. So you stand there. Like I say, I think all four of you went to camp. Go stand there, face the congregation. Each time before we would eat, we would uh, sing a prayer. And we're going to teach them this series. Maybe I should get Dawn up here. I think she knows it too. Uh, to the tune of the Adams family. Da 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 da. And like this. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Remember that one? Okay, we'll try to do our best. I may get the signals wrong a little bit. And then for the verse after the amens, we say, that's where we need your help. I'm not sure they had this memorized, but you should be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Remember that one? His mercy is blessed and grant that we may for thy service be. You're supposed to know that one better. Okay, well, here we go. Ready? Da 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 da. Da 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 Amen, amen, amen. Let's eat. Okay, thanks for coming out. <laughs> what do you do that? In my notes. If you don't check your notes, you sometimes forget things, and they definitely did. Let us rise as we sing our gospel acclamation.
Grace and peace to each of you from Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. It has been a difficult time to watch the news this week. Hospitalizations up from COVID. People of Haiti continuing to struggle in the aftermath of their earthquake and tropical storm. More reports of floods and deaths in Tennessee yesterday. And now, of course, the news of the withdrawal from Afghanistan and the resulting fears of those who can't get out before the arrival of the Taliban. One reflection shows this latter fear. A young Afghan woman who has worked with international organizations and as a U.S. contractor said this from the Kabul airport on Monday. She said, I'm in the airport waiting to get a flight but I don't know to where. I am here, confused, hungry, and helpless. I don't know what is coming my way. Where will I go? How will I spend my days? Who will support my family? What do people do in tough situations? What did Joshua and Peter do in the situations they faced? in our Old Testament and Gospel lessons. First, the Israelites, as they were gathered in the Promised Land and tempted to return to the gods of their ancestors beyond the Euphrates. Joshua summons the tribes to Shechem in a covenant renewal. He says they can choose which direction they want to go. But for him and his family, they choose to serve the Lord to which the people reflect on their past liberation from Egypt and entry into the land. Yes, they too will serve the Lord, for he is their God. A tough situation is confronted with faith and trust in the Lord, their God. In the gospel, it is the early disciples and followers of Jesus who begin to question this whole idea of Jesus being the bread that we now eat and blood that we now drink. Some want to return to their old ways of thinking. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Many of them turn back and no longer follow Jesus. Jesus then turns to the twelve. Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answers with the words we sing in many of our gospel acclamations. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Then like the Israelites of old, his confession of faith. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. They need their moment of difficulty with faith and trust in the Lord, their God. We are at moments of difficulty in the life of our congregation and our world. COVID has especially thrown us for a loop for well over a year now. Do we want to go on as a church, trusting in the promises and strength of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are we ready to start another year with Rally Sunday next week and commit to all the newness and required support that that entails with the proper precautions? For the Ephesians in our second lesson, Paul encourages them to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. They are to put on the armor of God to withstand the difficult times in which they live. They are to put on truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Remembering back to the Afghanistan area, at age 13, Nobel Peace Laureate, Malayla Yushafzai began blogging about conditions in schools in the Swat Valley under the Taliban, advocating for opportunities for girls. Two years later, she was targeted by a gunman. 
Today, as a student at Oxford, she continues her commitment to that goal, that all girls receive 12 years of free, safe, quality education. In Malayla, one hears the echoes of the cry of the young Afghan woman we spoke about at the beginning of the sermon, who also said on Monday, I will never forgive the world for staying silent. I didn't deserve this. No one deserves this. No matter one's religion, following shalom and human dignity as proclaimed by Jesus, will be met with resistance and often violence. That great American writer Mark Twain once said, most people are bothered by those passages in scriptures which they cannot understand. But as for me, I always notice that the passages in scripture which trouble me most are those which I do understand. I suspect that at times we all would like to walk away from the church and never come back. We want a God different from the one we find in Jesus. Flesh and blood, yes. But demanding, no. Resurrected, yes. But crucified, no. Salvation, yes. Repentance, no. Love, yes. Commitment, no. Unfortunately, you cannot have one without the other. The rose comes with the thorns. The pains come with the birth. Night comes with day. The best of times can only be lived because there are those times that are so bad. To whom can we go? Who has the words of eternal life? Do our words of confession lead to acts of mercy and love for all of humankind in these times of greatest need? In a couple weeks on September 12th, we will be doing another God's work, our hands we missed last year for the first time for obvious reasons. Uh, we're down to two possibilities, either the Respite Center downtown or the Hope Family Clinic in South McAllen, which has health services for those who do not have health insurance themselves. And we'll pick one of those two yet this week. And then by next week on Rally Sunday, we'll have a flyer, a list of items you can donate and bring in. We'll collect those on the 5th and the 12th, and we will continue to help in that way to put our confessions of faith to acts of mercy. Um, just a quick brief story that happened to me this morning. Uh, I don't know how many weeks ago, Vicki can probably help me on the exact dates, but uh, we had a gentleman sleeping here overnight, you know, or observe that situation in different ways. And in this, but this particular gentleman was very threatening and violent in different ways. And particularly people that would come in to work early and stuff were, were threatened by him. And so finally had to call the police on him. And of course, when they came to take him away, we requested, is there any way you can find an appropriate place for him to go? Uh, I don't know if they were able to do that, but we did that in that case. And then this morning when I came in early, I noticed somebody was sleeping on the bench again. I just assumed he had come back and he was going to challenge what we had said or something. As I got around from here to the corner, I got around and suddenly I realized it wasn't him. It was a woman. And as I got closer, I, I woke her up. And a uh, very young woman, I'd say maybe in her early 20s. And as she sat up, I could see that she was pregnant, and uh, quite a different situation. I was prepared kind of to school the guy for coming back, and suddenly I was confronted with a different situation. So I took the time to visit with her, ask her name. Her name is Genesis, which we know means beginnings, and uh, talk briefly about her life and stuff, and how uh, she's seven months pregnant, and uh, she's 
She says that her mom would take her back when the baby's born, but she kept talking about this. She wants to be on her own. She wants to be on her own. She compared herself to other young women that are out and have their lives and salaries and stuff, and she wants to be somebody like that. So uh, I gave her a couple of resources that I could remember off the top of my head, but we ended up talking quite a while out there. And uh, just the opportunities that present themselves, the challenge, I know we've been talking about these big world issues, Afghanistan, on and on, but uh, we're confronted with the small issues that are very big for people like Genesis. So we remember her in our prayers today and pray as we go into Rally Sunday next week that we will continue to take the risk and the commitment uh, that Jesus calls to in the world in which we live today. Let us rise to sing an old favorite song, Blessed Assurance. God of courage, 
Bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world. You have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. We especially lift up the nation of Afghanistan, the nation of Haiti, and places in our own nation like Tennessee that have suffered floods and the West Coast with so many of their fires. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Especially remember Genesis this morning, who we met this morning. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. We especially lift up Jason and Victoria in their new home in Maine. We pray for our congregation and rally Sunday and all the newness of that we bring. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to remember Judy Keith at home, Judy Peterson on the West Coast, Barbara Thompson home from the hospital, Kathy Bush with her son, Greg Danielson in Legends, Erica Overa just recently diagnosed with COVID, Larry Wilson still recuperating from his back surgery, and so many others we remember in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share the Lord's peace with one another. This time, wherever we feel comfortable sharing the name.
success, I think is the word, <laughs> success in that area. Uh, you can get script orders today, Vicki's in the back. Uh, this is the day to purchase those, and uh, you'll receive your cards next Sunday. We talked about Rally Sunday next week. It's going to be kind of a hymn fest. We'll have two or three traditional songs, two or three contemporary songs, two songs by the Youth Lost Group, one song by the children that they learned in our summers, summer camp we did here. It's a lot of music, blessing of the backpacks, you install the teachers. Um, we found out kind of last minute that one of our three teachers we were thinking we'd have is not able to do it. So I went ahead and started planning and just asking people, could they take one month? And this would be for the fourth through sixth or seventh grade age range. I was able to find a volunteer for September and for October, so we're covered for that start. But if anyone would like to commit for one month, November is open. If you pick December, you usually only have to do three Sundays at the most. You wouldn't have to do four. So um, it's going to be a big week next week. And then, of course, the week after, we go back to the two services. Be a little low numbers at both of those at the start. But can, traditional 930, Sunday school 930, and contemporary 11, we still will be, Van will be leading the adult study at that 930 hour as well. So that will be September 5th. Uh, the last one would be the praise team, since they're going to be singing already next week. They will have their first practice this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And we'll be able to see Kenneth Rivens around again after summer without it. That doesn't mean you can take a break, though, John. You have to, you have to keep coming back. Any other announcements this morning? I know there's fellowship next door. We welcome visitors that are here. Please join us for fellowship. Rudy makes a mean cup of coffee. So if you never had Rudy's coffee, you need to give it a try. Let's see. We'll rise for our closing hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.